Hello everyone, this is Marshall Official. This is another Russia Ukraine War update, and today we have absolute major news coming from the war in Ukraine. And let me just say right now, we are not going to be starting this video in Ukraine, but instead we're moving over here to the far east of Asia. And here we can see we have many changes coming on from way over here that are affecting this war in Ukraine. Starting off here in North Korea and South Korea. This is necessary. This doesn't necessarily directly affect the war in Ukraine, but it is nevertheless news that is major enough that it's worth being put in here. Because we have a drone that reportedly struck or landed, it was shot down or something. We don't know how exactly. It, was, it just said it was found in Pyongyang, which is the capital of, of North Korea. It reportedly, it's a reconnaissance drone, a spy drone that was launched from South Korea, flew over Pyongyang before it was, again, either landed, shot down or something like that. It doesn't, doesn't say how it was found, but it is. it was on the ground in Pyongyang. A picture was taken of it. I'll show the picture on the screen right now. And that vi and, and North Korea is now threatening war in this situation if this happens again. So if this happens again, North Korea says it could be war between them and South Korea. Moving on from that, we have more geolocation coming here from Far Eastern Russia. These ge this first geolocation shows cl clear as day North Korean troops entering Russia and marching through what appears to be a Russian military base in Far Eastern Russia. Right around somewhere in this er area right here. Moving and then another another geolocation. Clear again, clear as day shows North Korean soldiers switching out of their uniforms and donning Russian military uniforms. So now we know for a fact that North Koreans are entering Russia and they are joining the Russian military. North Korean soldiers, I should say, are, are entering Russia and they are now donning Russian military uniforms for obvious uses. They're going to be put. They're going to be sent to fight in Ukraine. Maybe potentially not in Ukraine itself because, according to the reports. Not the these soldiers, the North Korean soldiers, are going to be sent specifically to the Kurth region, which could free up a lot of Russian forces there, or they could support the Russian forces already there and together want to launch a large offensive to kick the Ukrainians out of Kursk. But the point is that the DPRK soldiers are being sent to Kursk, most likely, and and, and as for numbers, they range they range quite wildly. Um. South Korea claims it's about 1,200 soldiers. Not a not a very big deal. It's a big deal in general because it is North Korea sending troops to Russia to fight in Ukraine. That is that that is that's major in general. But the numbers again again it, it also matters on the numbers. North, South Korea claims it's 1,200 North Korean soldiers, but other estimates say it could be as high as 12 as 12,000 because we have also reportedly have pictures. I don't I don't have the pictures, but they I saw the pictures on. Um, on the telegram, those pictures reportedly show North Korean troop transports were, were in Vladivostok. Several of them, and about and they reportedly can carry about 500 troops total. So put it all together, that gets to around to around 12,000 soldiers in from North Korea in now in Russia. So that, that that obviously is major news, and that is that this that this whole news about so North Korea is effectively is now based, they are now sending troops to fight against Ukraine. They are selling, they're giving some of their soldiers over to Russia to fight Ukraine. Zelensky himself commented on this in a video that he posted where he, where he basically he said that North Korea effectively is now at war with Ukraine. He said that. So this is so this is major news, people. This is this is don't get it wrong, this is major news. Russia and North Korea are now at war with Ukraine effectively. North Korea is not directly obviously at war with Ukraine, but they're basically sending they're sending volunteers, basically. They're sending a volunteer force. To fight in Russia, for to fight in the Russian military against Ukraine, it's, they're sending their soldiers to fight for, for Russia in their military against Ukraine. So that's how that. But so basically, it's a volunteer force, basically. Like it's like it's like what the United States did with you know, did with the United Kingdom back in World War II before the United States joined World War II. They they sent some of the, they they allowed some of their soldiers to volunteer to fight for Britain in British in British uniform. So that's basically what North Korea is now doing for Russia. Moving on from that to the Kursk region, which is where we believe the North Korean soldiers will be sent. We actually have a lot of big changes. For one, Russian forces have been able to completely recapture Tulsi Lug right here, and also and have reached the river right here. They also recaptured Novo Vyanovka, and we also have a geolocation. I didn't, I did not have the geolocation. Military summary has that. I couldn't find it on the Telegram. So military summary has the geolocation. If you want to see the geolocation, go watch the video. The, the Telegram, or sorry, the video. Shows Russian shows Russian military vehicles barreling down this road right right, right along right, right here, which seems to confirm the Russian forces have now broken through along this road and fighting has been, has been reported over Viktorovka. 
Pair that with the recent Russian advance in capturing Novo Sur Suro China, and the fact that fighting is now taking place in Staroyana, Staroyaya Suro China, then that means Russian forces are about to encircle all these Ukrainian forces right here. Assuming that if this really is true, then the only thing standing between the Russians and in, in in completely encircling God knows how many Ukrainians up in these villages and fields up here is this one little village, Malaya Loknia. Is the last thing that the Ukraine that the Russians need to capture to cut the Ukrainians off. Also, this one right here, Nikolaevka. Recapture that, and the Ukrainians will be and the Ukrainians will be encircled up here. So this is major news as well. Major developments happening here as well. In the next couple of days, we might see either a major Ukraine withdrawal from all this territory, or the encirclement of it, and the Ukrainians will be forced to surrender. Uh, on top of that advancement, we also have this advancement right here. Russian forces were able to recapture Ruskaya. Konopelka, and they are now advancing onto Agriconum. Reports are that the Russian forces are going to are going to launch a major attack to retake Suja before the end of the year. So that completes uh, that, that completes our update on the Kursk region. Let's move on now to other advances. The Volchan direction, we have no change no changes from this direction whatsoever. Moving on from that, we do have changes we do have changes from the Kupions direction. Russian forces were able to make some gains right here in the, in the forest to the northeast of Kupiansk. As on top of that, let's also discuss this. We have major news coming from Kurilakivka. This this advanced by all these advances that I talk about are all are all confirmed by Syriac Maps, the best the best source out there. They are a neutral source and they are un, they are unbiased, they are neutral, and they are, and they have all pure information. So that's where I get all my information from. Or at least I guess that's where I get most of my information from. I get that and also geolocated videos. This one has both. This is confirmed by Syriac Maps, and this is all confirmed by geolocation, which I will show right now. That, that geolocation shows clear as day Russian forces entering Kurilakivka and fighting their way through the village. And, Russian, and, and this means that at this point, we can now officially declare that the Russian forces have now reached the Oskil River. Effectively, there is still a bit of a gray zone here. But in the, in the video, you can, you can see just how close Russian forces are to the river. It's like right in the background. So Russian forces are, have, have now effectively reached the Oskil River. And they have now cut the Luhansk Kharki front in half. Between the, between the northern northern half and the southern half, Russian forces have now have now reached the Oskil River, cutting this front in half. They will either one from this point, they will either do one or two things, or possibly both. So now now that the Russian forces have in fact reached this area right here, but they will now begin to advance northward along this along this highway to reach Kupiansk and this direction and circle the Ukrainian forces here, or they will push southward along the highway this direction to reach Borova. And they could pair that easily. Pair that with an offensive. But they already put. You can see here, Russian forces are already putting pressure on this area right here. They made a few advancements here in just the last couple of days. They will advance from here, pushing along this highway right here, and advancing to Barova from this direction, capturing Barova, right here, which will also encircle the Ukrainians in this area right here. So this is major developments right here. Major, absolutely major developments. They could also, since they have reached the area, they could capture Sinkobe. And push across the river, moving north towards Kupians from this direction, and in general just begin a major river crossing in all directions. But the point is that this area, with this area now, now under Russian control, what happens next? That is the question now. It's not. It is not about will Russia, will Russia reach the Oskil River. The question now is what do they not? What's going to happen now that they have? So that is this is absolutely major news. That the Russian, Russian forces now reaching the Oskil River is major news. Moving on from that, we have a small little Russian advancement right here. Nothing much. Just a little cap capture a little piece of the field right here to the east of Novo Sadove. And general Russian forces are continuing their pressure on this front. You can see they've made some gains here in the past. They're trying to push onto Novo Sadove, Terne, Yampolivka from this from this front moving west right here. And also pushing south from Nevsky, which they captured a little bit ago. Uh, not much not much to talk about that front. We also have no change from the Severs front. That is what you expect. It's just that's the usual right there. No changes from that part of the front line. Chasavyar, we still have no reported changes. Uh, there was some, I saw, I saw some things on the Telegram talking about this Russian advance we saw, which we saw in my last video. Uh, the results talk about how Russian forces actually were able to enter Chasavyar in this, in, from the southern direction, capturing, you know, maybe, maybe like this area right here. No, no confirmation on that yet. So we'll see what happens and what changes in the near future, see if anything changes. But we are, there are re reports about Russian forces making further gains on that part of the front line. We just don't have any, we just can't confirm it yet. Uh, moving on to the Torsk, to the Tourette's front. Uh, again, no changes from this part of the front line. Uh, just usual, we have a lot. But we do have clear proof 
but the Russian forces have begun prepping northwestern Tourette's for their for their offensive because we saw multiple visits happening coming from right in this area right here how Russian forces were launching 1,500 kilogram bombs on this area right here so they're clearly clearly Russian forces and we know when Russia starts doing them and when we, when we start seeing the FPV drones come out and the ODAB what are they called the ODB something like that bombs the 1,500 kilogram bombs come out and they start pounding this area right here or just pounding whatever they start hitting like crazy the areas like they start hitting those areas with, with with those kind of bombs that's how you know the Russians are getting ready to launch their attack and take and take that area so they have they're launching their FAB drones on this or sorry FAB FAB bombs on this area up here in northwestern Tourette's so we know Russian forces are getting ready to make their assault and take this area which will at that point leave only a few parts of the city still under the Ukraine control so we'll see what happens next, but things, but pretty soon we're going to see Russia's big push to finish off Tourette's once and for all. No changes from the Leo Zanivka front, and no changes from down here. We do have a, little, a small little change here with the geolocation. Russian forces at some point, probably recently, were able to capture these warehouses right here, or these farmhouses, or whatever they are, just outside of the town of Volzdenizhenka. This is confirmed by the geolocation, you can see here, by the geocaching that you are currently watching. Moving on from that, we have no changes from the Celadovi front, at least as of right now. We did get a geolocation that proves Russian forces are still in control of part of the Terracon in this area right here. But other than that, we have nothing to talk about from this part of the front line. Uh, we do have a small change right here into in the west of Sukarine. Russian forces captured the absolute last piece of the last, the absolute last piece of the village. However, the Ukrainians still maintain control of these warehouses right here, just to the west of the village. So we can't necessarily say that, that the town is fully secure under, under Russian control until this area has also fallen. So until Russia forces control something like this, we can't really say that the area is 100% controlled by Russia just yet. But effectively, Sukur, uh, effectively, Sukarine has now fallen. Just putting out there, it has effectively fallen. Okay, we do have another geolocation right here. Russian forces already captured the entirety of these fields right here, and the Ukrainian forces have actually abandoned all the rest of the fields, and they have now fully retreated into the into the, the conglomerate of cities, Hernek, Karakivka, and Zuryane, and also Oleksandropil. They have completely withdrawn. Com they have completely withdrawn from their positions to the east, and have withdrawn into the cities themselves. So the the battle for all this wide open territory that that we, that we saw over the last couple of weeks and few months. All this area right here is in effect is now finally over. Russian new Russian forces and just you can just, you all remember when the front line looked like this, but now all this area here has been filled in. Just putting that out there. And we have also a big advancement to the south of Maximilianka. Remember this this fell just yet, this in my last video. Now Russian forces have captured all the fields and tree lines to the south of it, including a little crossing of the highway right here. So moving on from that, we have another. We have another. Okay, we have a bit of an interesting situation here down in, down in Katerinivka. I do not quite know what happened here. We did get another. We actually, actually, my my report, my map that I had showing this area under Russian control was actually appears to have been premature because Syriac Maps just made the report now today that this area fell to Russia right here that I have that I've had under Russian control for a long time. I just didn't know. I thought I was I thought it was already under Russian control. Clearly I was wrong. But it now is under Russian control. So just today it was confirmed that this area is under Russian control. I was just way over I was just way early on reporting that. I, I did not know I did not even know I did that. So sorry about that, but this map is now correct. So this note as of right now this map is now finally correct. So we got a weird report from the Ukrainian forces that were I guess in Katerinivka that Katerinivka has fallen to Russia. The, the the forces of the area that were in the forces of the Ukraine that were from this part of the front reported that Katerinivka fell and that they and that they were basically starving there. Like they were they were sent there and there was nothing to, and they and then the Russian forces just stormed it and they were forced to get out of there. However that has not been confirmed with again geolocations or Syriac maps have not made that report yet that this area has fallen to Russia. But we did get this geolocation that shows what appears to show Ukraine forces surrendering, I guess, to Russia. I can't understand what, of course, what they're saying. The description of this video on the Telegram is Ukrainian forces captured at after the battle of Katarnivka. Like it's in the past tense, but Katarnivka has already fallen. So 
it's just it's too weird for me to make a decision decision or wait for me i, I don't want to guess i don't i don't want to guess what the situation is Ketra and Nivka has possibly fallen so all i did was i pulled the ukraine forces back to after Ketra and Nivka and left it in the gray zone because i'm not quite sure what the situation here is as of right now we'll see hopefully in the near future and we have one last little update right here that the Russian force made a small little gain here to the to the northwest of Volodar, catching this little piece of field right here. Not a big deal. So with that, that is now your entire map update. Let's go on to the political updates real quick. We'll get through this real quickly. All right. So first of all, France supports the victory plan. We will help Ukraine as much as necessary. This was stated by the head of the French Foreign Ministry. And also, big news: the first Mirage 2000 aircraft will be provided to Ukraine at the beginning of 2025. This statement. This statement was came from the head of Foreign Ministry of France. So Ukraine will receive Mirage 2000 aircraft, which are French fighter jets. They will be given to Ukraine in early 2025. So that is some big news for you. According to Mike Turner, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, he stated that the use of North Korean troops against Ukraine should be a red line for the United States. So he's saying that the United States should not tolerate North Korean troops fighting, fighting in Ukraine. Or he said fighting specifically against Ukraine. So it's unclear what he means by that. Is it okay for Russia to use North Korean troops to kick the Ukrainians out of Kursk, which is recognized as Russian territory? If so, is you should you can the United States be mad be mad at Russia for doing that to kick the Ukrainians out of their own territory? Now, a different story would be what happens if Russian forces actually send North Korean troops into Ukraine or rec what is recognized Ukrainian territory internationally recognized Ukrainian territory to fight the Ukrainians on internationally recognized their home soil, basically. There was an exchange of prisoners that took place tonight. Ukraine returned home 95 of its soldiers from Russian captivity, so a little bit of a prisoner exchange right there. Not not that big of news. That has happened fairly often. The Netherlands will supply Ukraine with Delta Quad reconnaissance UAVs worth 42.6 million euros. That was stated by the Minister of Defense of the country. The White House supports Lenti's victory plan, according to White House Speaker of National Security Kirby. And this is the last thing, real quick. This says Putin will not attend the G20 summit in Brazil, but Russia will be represented at a high level. So Russia will be represented there, but it won't be Putin himself. He will not be there. So with that, guys, that is your whole update. This is a major update. This is major news, breaking news happening with with, with this war. I had to make a video on it because it's just it's just that major. So thank you guys for coming here watching this. So please like, subscribe, and don't forget to keep these videos coming. Make sure you share it and tell, tell all your friends about it. With that, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.